Today we are going to explore painting and focus on texture. Texture is an element of art and it's the way something feels. So when you go to the counter, the first thing you need to get is a piece of paper. You can get whatever color of you want. The second thing you need is a paintbrush. Looks something like this, one of our normal paintbrushes. We're not going to be using this regularly. We're going to be using it to scoop paint onto our paper. We're not going to be using it to move paint around. You're also going to need a texture brush. I'm holding two, but you only need one. So find a tool that when you touch it, it has an interesting texture to you. When you have these three things, paper, regular paintbrush, and a texture tool, you can go sit down and write your name and class code on the back. Be sure you get that class code so that your paper doesn't get lost in the universe of the art room and turn it over. You'll be using this brush to add paint to your paper. We're going to be using two primary colors, red and yellow. We will be also be using white to make our colors lighter. We will not be using blue. Blue is also a primary color. So when you use your paintbrush today, normally I would say to not use your paintbrush as a scoop. But today I'm going to say go for it. So I've scooped up some red and I'm just going to dab it onto my paper in a few places. I don't want to move the paint around. I just want to use my paintbrush to put the paint on the paper in a few different areas. When I've done that, I don't have any water to wash my brush off, so I'm going to use the table mat until it's not really making many marks anymore. I still have paint, paint on my paintbrush, but it's not making very many marks. And I'm going to take yellow and I'm going to scoop it and I'm going to put it in the areas that don't have any paint. Again, I'm using it as a scoop to scoop it onto my paper. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use that mat on the side to get as much paint as I can until it's not making a, much of a mark anymore. And I'm finally going to get white. Using white to make it more light. When you add white to a color, you're making it light. And that lighter color is called a tint. Not like a camping tint. We're not going camping. This is a tint. T-I-N-T. -T. So add some white. Okay, so I'm going to set this brush aside. I won't need that anymore. And I'm going to pick up my texture tool. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm not going to use this to move the paint around either. Instead, I'm going to use it to press. So instead of painting, I'm going to use it almost as a printmaking tool. So what happens? I'm interested to see what will happen when I use this as a printmaking tool instead of a painting tool. And as you can see, not only is it making a cool texture, but it's also making some other really cool colors that I didn't have before, like orange and pink and kind of a peachy color. And it's making a really cool texture. You're going to do this until you have your entire paper filled with texture. So I don't want to really be able to see much of my paper when I'm finished with this. So now my paper is filled with texture. If I were to touch it, which I definitely 
don't want to do because it's wet right now. But if it were dry and I ran my hand over it, it would feel smooth. It looks like it has texture, but if I ran my hand over it, it would be smooth. When something is smooth, but it looks like it has texture, that is called an implied texture. It's a texture that you can see, but you can't feel. It's implied. When you are finished with your texture painting, you can go and put it on your grade level's drying rack to dry. Have fun with this, guys. Let's go!